Good morning, everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for joining us today in the fifth annual Construction Summit Middle East. It's been five years that I've been witnessing this event, and every year we see more and more success in terms of attendance, discussions, and topics that we raise for uh, debates and discussions across uh, uh, those uh, events that we have. Uh, in this event, we tend to focus on a primary topic, which is leveraging the technology within our beloved construction industry. And uh, we're happy today to have a collection of key people in the industry who come from different backgrounds, different locations, different parts of this region, who are happily willing to share their knowledge and experience with each one of you and show you how things are being done in, the, uh, in their organizations in terms of achieving the digital transformation uh, and leveraging more and more technology to drive adoption increase their productivity, and enhance their workflows and efficiency. So the main theme for today's summit is about embracing constructability and going beyond BIM. Most of us has heard, heard the building information building, so the voice keeps cutting. Can you? The term of BIM or building information modeling, which is becoming more and more utilized and leveraged in our construction industry. And that's one of the many technologies that are available within this era or time frame. So we're going to try to explore today more and much more offering of those different technologies, possibilities, capabilities, and can be uh, leveraged to increase our productivity and efficiency. So before I start, I would like to take you through a little bit of a historical story, talking mainly about the Industrial Revolution. So back in the 18th century, when James Watt introduced the steam engine, that has actually marked the first Industrial Revolution. By then, it was the steam engine, it was leveraging the mechanical power, and that could allow us to expedite our transportation, transportation, transportation of people, as well as transportation of goods. With that came more demand across the world because the trade lines became more vibrant, and then came the second industrial revolution, where we have discovered or invented electricity. Combining that with the mechanical power, we were able to achieve assembling production lines in order to produce, or let's say to uh, deploy mass production to meet that increasing supply in the market and then utilize the shipping and the transportation towards new markets, different parts of the world. It made things come closer, but the main beneficiary of that revolution was primarily the industry, the manufacturing part. Then things kept evolving, and in the 20th century, there was the introduction and deployment of computing systems and automation. And that was like a huge leap in terms of revolutionary uh, invention or uh, offering, which many, many industries, including manufacturing, of course, and let's say farming, banking, insurance, you name it, everyone could benefit out of that. And they started using that computing and patient power into their workflows and their processes to become more efficient and more productive. And now we're talking about Industry 4.0, the fourth industrial revolution. And I consider us as a generation are graced or very lucky 
to witness the transition between Industry 3.0 to 4.0. We're actually seeing a mega or gigantic kind of uh, transition between those two revolutions. And 4.0 is primarily driven by many factors. Among those, there are two primary things. It's connectivity, and that is offered by networking, 5G, uh, let's say cloud computing, you name it. There are many ways to introduce the connectivity. It also leverages the data liberation. The data is the new gold. Mining data, data science are new technologies that we all hear about. Internet of Things, uh, smart cities, machine learning, AI, autonomous. We've all been hearing about all those technologies and witnessing some and maybe use them. When it comes to our industry, construction, we all come from this industry. We have been always accused, and I would say like there are stands for that accusation, that we're behind in terms of technology adoption. We're very traditional in the way we do construction and not really implementing efficient or deploying efficient workflows and solutions to become more productive. Many projects are finishing behind the timeline, way above budget. I'm not saying all of them, but we all know that there are many of those cases. Yet, we started to see and experience and utilize in our pro uh, projects the utilization of things like building information modeling, 3D modeling, mobile computing, tablets. So my counter argument to that accusation would be maybe we've been waiting for the right revolution to happen in order to start to jump on the train and make that change within our industry. It is actually happening. So what we're going to be talking about today is the next step. We all have been experiencing those different technologies and we want to see how those can be further utilized to achieve more automation and more data liberation, more constructability across our projects. And that's going to be the primary topic of many of the presentations and panel discussions that we're going to be viewing or witnessing today. So this is a brief of our agenda. I believe each one of you has a copy of that agenda. So primarily, we're going to start with a session about constructability, then a keynote address from Sharjah Research and Technology uh, and the Innovation Park, uh, a presentation coming from Saudi. We all hear about the EGA projects going on in Saudi. One of those is the Red Sea Development, and today we're honored to have a representation from the Red Sea uh, Development Company to talk about the digital transformation going on there. Then we have other presentations about connectivity, which is coming from Etisalat, and that is mainly about the 5G and the smart cities. We're going to step also into a panel discussion about from bricks to boots, and that's showing the impact of the Industry 4.0 on our day-to-day -day activities in the construction. Following that, we're going to have the uh, geospatial section, which is leveraging the geospatial and mapping information combined with GIS, Geographical Information System, into achieving the vision of smart cities. It is becoming uh, a well-known term. Most of the governments regionally and globally are looking forward to that and they want to see how they can achieve that as far and as efficient as possible. After that, we're going to have Q&A sessions for the geospatial section uh, and then we're going to break out into a couple of sessions. So we're going to ask some of you to remain in this room for one of the streams and I believe some of you have already selected this stream. And then the second portion will go into a different location our team will be guiding you through the other hall. After the breakout sessions, we're going to come back here, uh, try to uh, summarize the event, and then break for lunch and finally event. So once again, I welcome you all to the fifth annual construction summit, Middle East. I would like to thank our sponsors, 
our esteemed guests, our presenters, our panelists, and everyone who's contributed into this event. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping, so safety comes first. Fire exits are on my right hand side, in case, God forbid, any event. Then we have a few things that you can be leveraging the social media for, so you can follow us on Facebook, Construction Summit ME, on Twitter, and our alias is TCS underscore ME. Uh, you can use the, use the hashtag TCS and me as well if you want to uh, post anything on Twitter or on social media. When it comes to questions and answers, we're going to try to make this as interactive as possible. So there is a website. Each one of you can now browse to the site called Slido, SLI.do, and use the hashtag TCS and me to log in where you can post your questions. So there will be like certain moments where there will be like Q&A. Please feel free and make it as interactive as possible. This is our chance to benefit from the knowledge and experience of others. Uh, another thing I would like to encourage you to do is the model competition. So if you go out to the different booth, the last booth to your left, the moment you step out, we have the BIM competition or BIM Awards model competition. Uh, it's a collection of very, very significant and mega projects that are done regionally. We have this as an annual competition and award. So feel free to step by that booth, view those models, and then they will give you the website where you can actually put your vote and vote for the best model that you see. Thank you, everyone.